Now, damage from the Guazulu Natal floods is being assessed. Roads and settlements were flooded, and some schools have been forced to close. ENCA reporter Litu Mluli joins us now to tell us about the impact that uh, the flooding over the weekend has had on schools. Litu, uh, the last time floods happened, uh, there was no learning for about a week or so. Uh, can you give us an update on how the impact was from the recent floods? Well, Maseko, what we've been told by the Department of Education this afternoon is that um, only one school remains inaccessible during um, this time um, that was affected by the recent flooding. And all other schools um, are operating. But of course, yesterday they did re uh, release a statement saying that parents and teachers, especially principals, will have to decide whether they will be opening schools today or not. And that is because they wanted to make assessments, full assessments, on today as to how many schools exactly were affected by the floods or not. Um, I have been um, driving around Durban with my colleague and we have found that most schools in the southern parts of Durban um, were able to open today and we saw pupils heading to schools um, this morning. But for some schools in the northern parts of Durban which has been badly affected by the recent floods, uh, we saw that majority of them did decide to lock their gates and those um, pupils will then have to um, go to school tomorrow um, but for today they were told to go back home I have been speaking to the HOD about their recovery plans because this of course is going to affect teaching and learning and you'll understand that over the past month a week was lost and that means that now the department has to make other plans uh, for those schools that are still losing time when it comes to um, the floods we spoke to the HOD and when he was sharing the plan that they have he also mentioned that they want to include winter classes in the their plan. They want to include um, holiday classes and also weekend classes so that they can t try and recover the time that they've lost. It's not only the floods that have affected the schools, it's also uh, the looting that happened last year during that time. Some schools were affected and they remained closed for about a month. And before that there was COVID-19. So um, pupils have been dealing with um, losing time when it comes to learning for about two years now. And the HOD did share that they They've made contingency plans for that as well. While speaking to him, this is what he had to say. We are hopeful that we'll still uh, make up for the ground lost. Because the, the, the cohort of learners that we have now uh, in every grade uh, would be a cohort that has lost out on, on some of the topics that they would have done in the previous grade because uh, we had to add to resort to an abridged curriculum uh, so that we at least we are able to uh, to promote them to the next grade uh, having done some work rather than just uh, automatically uh, promote them mm -hmm. so when they get to the next grade uh, they get to the next grade with a with a handover report that the next uh, grades teachers will know which which gaps are there in the in the curriculum from what they should have learned in the in the in the previous grade so our our curriculum planning has been such that there is a recovery of work lost in grade 11 recovered now uh, you know in in in, in grade 12 we've, we've tried to restructure our program to be like that and all the other grades uh, you know uh, going uh, uh, going down and it does indeed mean that uh, any disturbance uh, disturbs that plan Right. We are also joined by senior reporter Desen Tatia, who's been in Umhloti and following the premiere as well. Desen, just explain to us or describe to us some of the damage that you've been able to see there. Well, the situation here is, is really, it's really sad, considering that this is the second time now in just over six weeks that we are seeing this kind of damage. Mm, all right. I think uh, I think uh, it, we are unable to uh, speak to Desen at the moment. Of course, uh, there is he has. Uh, okay. All right. I see we have them back now. Desen, you can continue. I see you showing us uh, some more of the damage that you you've witnessed today. All right. Uh, we cannot actually um, speak to Desen at the moment, but let's uh, throw to um, the mayor, uh, Kawunda. Uh, she, she, he spoke to uh, Desen Tathia a little earlier on. Here's a snippet of what they had to say. The treatment plant, which is, is behind us, 
has been severely affected. You'll recall that in the previous uh, disasters in April, we put some remedial measures so that people will start receiving water. So all those have been washed away. So our teams will come back and uh, reinstate some of the work that uh, have been done before uh, to ensure that people do access water in the areas affected. With electricity, many areas which have been affected, uh, we have reinstated them. Uh, so we are remaining with few uh, at night yesterday. Uh, we are certain that by, uh, by end of uh, today, we'll be certain that uh, all areas will be covered in terms of those who, which were affected by the recent uh, uh, heavy rains.